Here's what I think is the most effective pull day I have ever designed using the most up-to-date scientific research. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf with you today, PhD in sports science with Wolf Coaching, bringing you a super effective pull day that you can use as part of your push-pull legs program. Let me break down what makes this session so effective so you can design other sessions just like it in your program and build a lot of muscle. First, any workout you do within your program should fit within your program. This is a pull day. It's designed to be repeated twice a week to get you to reach the effective volume guidelines we have from the research. Can you do this once a week and still see progress? Yes, but for your best gains, do it twice a week and have slight variations in how each day looks. This pull day will have a slight upper back or rowing emphasis. So for your second pull day within the program, try having a slight lat emphasis or a slight vertical pulling emphasis. If you wanted to modify this into being an upper body day more so, try the old Arnold routine. Try supersetting chest and back work and try splitting this up into two days. For example, you could superset a chest pressing variation with one of the rowing variations within this pull day and superset one of the bicep exercises one of the tricep exercises. And in general, I typically prefer upper lower splits over push pull leg splits. Push pull leg splits really only work super effectively if you have time to consistently train six days a week. If you don't, you're not training each muscle group at least twice a week, which leaves some gains on the table. If you want more information on what the best routine is, check out the video above and it'll take you through all that. Next up, to make for an optimal session, we want to limit redundancy. On a pull day, you have a lot of different muscles you need to target. You have your upper back, your lats, your rear delts, your biceps, your forearms, your upper traps. And importantly, if you do a lot of work for one area, you eventually get diminishing returns. So we don't want to do a ton of volume for the same muscle group over and over again at the expense of other muscle groups. Next up, a good session has really effective rep ranges. And based on the research we have, that rep range is between 5 and 50 repetitions. As long as you're close enough to failure, any amount of reps between 5 and 50% will maximize hypertrophy. But the caveat is that most people struggle to go quite as close to failure when you get into super light high rep work. For instance, a scoping review by our own research group found that when people went much above 12 reps, their accuracy in gauging how close to failure they are really breaks down. So for feasibility and for making sure you train sufficiently close to failure, we'll be training mostly in the 5 to 15 rep range. However, since there is a benefit to be had potentially from combining different rep ranges, as was evidenced in an in-house meta-analysis by Zach Robinson, we'll still be using a variety of rep ranges across the session and across the whole training week potentially get a slight edge in overall muscle growth. Next up in the checklist, we'll want to use a maximally effective volume. We see really solid hypertrophy for most muscles between around 12 to 20 sets per week per muscle. However, based on some more recent research, around eight studies now, there might be a benefit to going over 20 sets per week per muscle. And so we're shooting for about five to 15 sets for most muscles within this session. So that if you repeat it twice a week, you get between around 10 to 30 sets per week per muscle. And you land within that really effective weekly volume range for all the muscles being trained. Next, for an optimal workout, we want to make sure we're picking the maximally effective relative intensity taking sets as close to failure as is necessary to maximize muscle building. Based on a meta-regression by Rawlinson and colleagues, we'll want to take sets pretty close to failure if our aim is to maximize hypertrophy. However, to minimize the impact of fatigue throughout the session, we'll want to stay a little bit further away from failure early in the session and go a little bit closer to failure later in the session, because going closer to failure also causes more fatigue. Next, for all of the muscle groups we're training on this day, aka the back, biceps, lats, rear delts, upper traps, forearms, you name it, we'll want to make sure we pick really effective effective exercises. I have a whole series on that very topic somewhere up here. I'll have the links in the description for you to check out and we'll be picking really effective exercises based on that series. To give you a quick overview of what makes an exercise better or worse for hypertrophy, here's what good exercises for hypertrophy usually have in common. First, they need to target one of the primary functions of the muscle we're trying to target. For the lats, for example, that could be shoulder extension. Second, as much as possible, the target muscle should be limiting factor. Next, the exercise we pick should be stretch friendly. That is to say, it places the target muscle in its lengthened position, it's pretty difficult in that lengthened position, and ideally, it is also lengthened partial friendly. Next, wherever possible, we'll want to minimize the involvement of other non-target muscle groups. So, if we can avoid being bent over, for example, and involving the glutes, adductors, and hamstrings in a rowing variation, we should probably do so. And finally, for some people, this is a pretty big factor, time efficiency. 
certain exercises are more time efficient than others. So pay attention to these factors as you select your exercises and you'll be in a really good position to create an effective back workout. We'll also want to make sure we're resting for sufficiently long between sets to maximize muscle building. I have a whole video coming out on rest times that's either out on the channel already, so check it out if it is, or stay tuned if it's not. But based on some more recent data, resting for about one to two minutes between sets for hypertrophy is a great starting place maybe closer to one minute for isolation movements and closer to two minutes for compound movements. Throughout this session, we'll want to make sure we use good technique on all exercises. I'm actually a co-author on a paper on that exact topic, but let me break down what the hallmarks of good technique for muscle building really are. Based on the evidence, we want to one, use a tempo of about two to eight seconds per rep maybe a slightly more explosive concentric and a slightly more controlled eccentric phase. Two, we'll want to emphasize the stretch position, either with a full range of motion, making sure to get a full stretch on each rep, or using lengthened partials, just doing the half rep in the lengthened position. And finally, we'll want to minimize involvement of non-target muscle groups. When it comes to back training, I think this is a common mistake, which is to involve other muscle groups that we're not really trying to grow. For example, turning a bent over barbell row into like a row deadlift hybrid. This probably doesn't do much for your back hypertrophy but it does add a lot of fatigue for your hip extensors. And the final factor in a good session is exercise order. Now, based on a recent meta-analysis by Nunes and colleagues, exercise order doesn't hugely matter. However, based on another study that's come out since then, there may be a marginal effect of exercise order on hypertrophy, such that whatever you train first gets a slightly better training effect. So we'll want to start this session with whatever we care about the most. If you really care about growing bigger biceps, for example, you may want to start your session with curls and then move on to your back work. In general, I also think it's worth sequencing exercises in a way that maximizes performance across the session. So if starting with curls, you find that your pull downs usually take a big hit, but the other way around, your curls don't take a hit, it may be worth starting with pull downs, essentially the sequencing that maximizes performance across the session. As a good rule of thumb, all else being equal, compound movements should come before isolation movements because these often have a larger technical component and these hit the most muscle groups and thus will have the biggest impact on your physique overall, it is probably worth doing them when you're freshest. But in general, exercise order is not a huge variable. Just follow these guidelines and you'll be more than fine. And without further ado, here's what I think is the most effective pull day I could design today, 2024 based on the evidence. Keep in mind, this pull day has a slight upper back focus. For your first exercise, start with a T-bar row or the incline dumbbell row. Alternatively, if you have them, a chest supported T-bar row is even better than a T-bar row and a prime machine row is just. Perform four to five sets of five to 10 repetitions, taking the first set to about three reps in reserve and the last set all the way to one rep in reserve, resting for about 90 seconds to 120 seconds between sets. What makes these exercises so effective? Well, for one, they all allow for a great stretch. You can get a full stretch in terms of positioning on all these exercises. Plus, the T-bar row options, both chest supported row and the regular one, and the prime machine emphasize the length and position also through tension if you set it up correctly. On the T-bar row variations, the moment arm decreases as you shorten the back musculature. Likewise, if you set up a prime machine properly, it preferentially lowers the stretch position. Conversely, if you like the incline dumbbell row, it's a great option because it's very time efficient. You grab the dumbbells and you get going. Minus the bent over T-bar row, all these options are chest supported which reduces the involvement of other muscle groups and potentially reduces overall fatigue generated. And finally, especially on something like a T-bar row variation or the incline dumbbell row variation, doing partials can be a great way to emphasize the stretch even more. So we've started the session with a rowing variation for the upper back. Next, we'll be performing an exercise for our lats and teres major muscle predominantly. I personally like the overhand close grip pull down, but any pull up or pull down variation will do. You'll be performing three to four sets of 10 to 15 repetitions, starting the first set with about two repetitions in reserve and taking the last set all the way to failure. Between sets, rest for about one to two minutes. Just like the incline dumbbell row, the pull down is essentially plug and play. You just select the weight on the stack and you get going. So it's a pretty time efficient exercise. Pull downs may have a slight edge over pull ups on account of being seated, which is always nice, and also in terms of being flexible when it comes to the rep range being used. Most people can't do more than about 15 pull ups, but on pull downs, you can essentially do as many reps as you want. So as far as versatility goes, the pull down is a slightly better option. Once again, because of the resistance curve in a pull up or a pull down, it'll be hardest as you shorten the back musculature. 
So lengthen partials, just doing half reps in that stretch position, are going to be a great way to emphasize the stretch even more. Alternatively, you could do lengthen partials after failure. While this could be a bit more fatiguing, since this is the last lat exercise for the session, it's not a bad idea. After the pull down, we have a second row variation. Because we've already done a heavier row variation, we'll do a lighter row variation with your chest supported in this case. Any sort of chest supported machine row is great, including the prime machine or a chest supported T-bar row even. Perform three to four sets of 15 to 20 repetitions, taking the first set to about two reps from failure, and for the last set, go all the way to failure. Rest for about one and a half to two minutes between sets. If you want to do flexion rows, upper back rows in which you intentionally flex and extend the spine, I think machine rows are the best place to do them. While you can absolutely do flexion rows on any rowing variation, like a barbell row or a cable row, Machine rows tend to be the best place to do them for one reason. In rowing variations without a chest pad, it is very easy to just flex and extend your hips, thinking you're flexing and extending your spine. But your back musculature, the erector spinae specifically, is responsible for spinal extension, not hip flexion and extension. And so if you want to target that muscle, as I mentioned earlier, we need to target its function. And with a chest pad, it becomes a lot more intuitive to keep your chest pinned against the pad, but just round over and extend, thereby actually targeting the erector spinae muscle. Because this might cause some stimulus, but also fatigue for your erector spinae muscle, if you're running a push-pull leg split, I would probably, and in general this is probably true, run it as push, legs, pull. This just increases the likelihood of your lower back being recovered by the time you train legs again. Just like for the pull-down, because this is the last back exercise you'll be doing within the session, feel free to do some partials after you hit full range of motion failure. Or alternatively, just do partials. Now that we've done a couple exercises for our upper back and even one for our lats, let's move on to some of the smaller muscle groups. First, let's train our biceps. For the biceps, I recommend the bench cable curl or the dumbbell preacher curl. Perform three to five sets of 10 to 15 repetitions, taking the first set to about one rep in reserve and the last set to about zero reps in reserve. Rest for about 60 to 90 seconds between sets. Both of these bicep exercises emphasize the stretched position. If you're looking for a bit more time efficiency, consider doing the dumbbell preacher curl as you just grab a dumbbell and get going. If you're looking for even more of a stretch focus, consider the bench cable curl. Now that we've trained the biceps, we'll be moving on to an exercise targeting the rear delts. For the rear delts and some of the upper back musculature, I recommend the rear delt cable crossover. Perform two to four sets of 10 to 20 repetitions, taking the first set about a rep away from failure and the last set all the way to failure. Rest for about 60 to 90 seconds between sets. During this exercise, if you perform it properly, you'll feel the greatest rear delt stretch you've probably ever felt in your training. Set up the cables around shoulder height and essentially just perform the opposite motion of a cable chest crossover. If getting cables at your gym is difficult or you don't have cables, consider doing rear delt machine flies instead. So we have now trained the back, the biceps and the rear delts with a total of five exercises. This is sort of the core of the pull day, right? You've trained the biggest muscle groups in the body as far as your pull day goes pretty effectively. But if you wanted to get extra credit or train certain muscle groups that otherwise don't get hit super well, but that aren't big enough to really care about for most people, here's what to do. You could do some additional upper trap work, forearm work, or add in even more bicep work. Because rows likely don't target the biceps super well, based on one study we have comparing the dumbbell row to a dumbbell curl, finding substantially less hypertrophy from the dumbbell row, doing some extra bicep training might not be a bad call. Let me give you some quick fire options to target the upper traps, forearms, and biceps respectively. For the upper traps, consider the seated dumbbell shrug, performing two to five sets of 10 to 20 repetitions with about a minute of rest between sets. For the forearms, consider dumbbell wrist curls, potentially superseded with dumbbell wrist extensions, for two to five sets of 10 to 20 repetitions. Rest for about 30 to 60 seconds between sets as you'll be resting the flexors while you train the extensors and vice versa. And finally, if you opt to add in another bicep exercise, do two to five sets of 15 to 20 repetitions on whichever bicep exercise you didn't pick earlier. So if you start with the preach curl, do the bench cable curl, or if you start with the bench cable curl, do the preach curl. That's the pull lead. Let's review the checklist and make sure we effectively trained or back musculature. First, we made sure to limit redundancy by including one to maybe two exercises per muscle group within the session. We included a variety of joint functions throughout the session, making sure that we get a complete stimulus for the muscles across the body and we don't just get overly redundant. We also made sure to include a variety of rep ranges. All of these rep ranges fell between about 5 and 25, making sure that we're getting a really effective stimulus for hypertrophy. In total, many of the muscle groups trained within this session are getting maybe 5 to 15 sets total within this session. For example, the upper back musculature that we're primarily training through rows and pull downs is getting somewhere between around 8 and 15 sets throughout the session. We made sure to take each set sufficiently close to failure to get a robust hypertrophy stimulus in. 
Additionally, we went a little bit closer to failure as the session progressed. We picked exercises methodically, making sure that they have the hallmarks of good exercises for hypertrophy. Based on some more recent research, we're also resting for sufficiently long between sets to maximize hypertrophy, around one to two minutes for most exercises. We generally started with more compound exercises and then moved into more isolation style exercises. But if you're focusing on certain muscle groups, feel free to change the order around a little bit. It may or may not be of benefit. Finally, as far as technique goes, we made sure to use good technique, emphasizing the stretch, controlling the eccentric sufficiently, not involving other muscle groups unnecessarily, like doing some sort of deadlift row hybrid. And so as far as a really effective session for hypertrophy goes, this takes those boxes. That is the video, broke down a lot of science on how to design good training sessions within your program, programming one-on-one, -on -one, and what a good effective pull day looks like. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below, like the video, subscribe. Let me know if there's any other videos you'd like to see me do. What's that? You don't know how to program your pull sessions and you would really appreciate it if someone created an app that took care of it for you. Oh, well that's funny because we've been developing an app just like that for about two to three years now. And that app is called MyoAdapt. MyoAdapt is a training app that essentially does everything a good evidence-based online coach would do for you for a fraction of the price. It creates a cutting edge individualized program based on the most recent research for you. You, if for example, you want to bring up your lats, it will take that into consideration and design the best program for you. We constantly update it to make it as effective as possible based on the new research that we're involved in. Designed by several people with PhDs in sports science, it's a really effective training app. And I'm confident in saying there's nothing else like it out there. So if you'd like to get notified when it launches, consider signing up on the email list at myodapt.com. When it launches, you'll get an email. And if you decide to sign up, you'll be locked in at a lower price than you would otherwise ever get. In the meantime, if you'd like me to coach you, check out wolfcoaching.com and we can make that happen. That is the video. We're Audi. Have a great day. Enjoy your back gains and peace.